This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. When it's game day for your health coverage, trust Farm Bureau Health Plans to draw up the winning play. They've been backing Tennesseans for 77 years with Amy Wells. I'm Mike Keith. And that's Chance Campbell. Woo-hoo. Number 45, linebacker for the Tennessee Titans. Welcome to the Bet MGM studio and the official Titans podcast. Thank you. Congratulations on the performance against San Francisco. You guys always say things like, now there'll be stuff on tape that we have to clean up. Um, I didn't see much you needed to clean up. So tell us, what did you believe you needed to clean up from what was a, a really super performance on Saturday night? Yeah, there's, there's always stuff to clean up. That's <laughs> definitely true. Um, we just had some uh, stuff early on in the game, some fits to clean up, um, finishing the game. You know, we had a, we had a strong, strong rally and then kind of want to not have to be in one of those situations at the end of the game. So finishing that up and then just technique and fundamental stuff that you can always work on. Were you supposed to bat the ball down at the end? 100%. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but do you? But do you? No. Great you hands <laughs> there. Yeah, that was a tough you? catch. Yeah, no, I should have bat that one down. <laughs> <laughs> now, as we've been going through training camp, we heard your name a couple times and then a couple more times. A lot of times. And then after the preseason game, it sounds like everybody's talking about you. Do you feel like this is the momentum that you were trying to generate? Yeah, I, I do a pretty good job of like not looking at stuff. So like I don't really try not to focus on a momentum thing. Just try to make it like a play at a time and that way you don't focus on things that like you know don't really help you doing your job at that specific time. A lot of Titans fans don't know your story very well and it and it's kind of related to COVID in a way in terms of you're from Ellicott City, Maryland, is that right? Yep, Ellicott City. Okay, and that's a suburb of Baltimore to the to the west. west. Okay, sure. and you you play high school football. Very good lacrosse player. I appreciate it. Did you ah. think about playing lacrosse in college? I did. Um, so my freshman year of college, I actually ended up taking a visit to Maryland for lacrosse before football. So I, I mean, I always wanted to play football in college, but the lacrosse. Um, recruiting deal kind of goes a little bit earlier. They've changed that a little bit, but so I thought for a little bit of time that that might be, you know, like a way to get my foot in the door. And then eventually when I realized I could, I could do football and I didn't necessarily have to do lacrosse, then I was kind of full bore on the football deal. Okay. So you go to Maryland, mm-hmm. three years, Yep. get a degree. Yes, sir. And during COVID, you decide to leave Maryland. Yep. <laughs> now, Take me through the decision. You're from the Baltimore area. You're playing in College Park, friends and family there. And at that moment, I, w- I would imagine that's more than a football decision in terms of the difficulty in making it, especially at that moment in time. Yeah, 100%. I was, I mean, I'm 35 minutes from the campus. Um, so my family is able to come to every game. Uh, my girlfriend was able to come every game. We live, uh, growing up, we're 15 minutes apart. Um, so I like, thought for a second I might have to leave her. Now she ended up coming and living with me at Ole Miss, which was, that was awesome. But yeah, it was a hard decision. It was definitely not an easy one. But also gave you a lot of real life experience, I would presume. How has that helped you as your career has gone on that you made that choice ultimately? Yeah, no, it was definitely helpful. I mean, I, I lucked out. I have like an awesome support system. So they, they definitely helped me make that decision, kind of let it be my own, but were there to kind of funnel me. Um, but I think it definitely prepared me because I'd never lived away from home. Um, so I packed all my stuff in a car, drove 14 hours to Oxford, Mississippi, kind of like lived on my own for a little bit before my girlfriend came down. So like a new place, a new team, new staff, like the whole the whole deal, which is pretty much what happens when you come to the league. So it was a little bit of a trial run. So I think like looking back on it, that's something that I thought that I was like trying to prepare for. But, you know, in hindsight, I think it was definitely a good thing for me. You weren't able to visit Ole Miss before you picked Ole Miss. No, no, the first time I saw it was when I got there. That's wild. (laughs) Yeah, it was was strange because of the COVID situation. So, and then um, I had to finish up graduating that spring. So I technically was still a student at Maryland at that time. Um, So I I think that was like kind of some like eligibility or those kind of deals were tricky. So I wasn't able to go down. Wow. That's wild. So, Ultimately, as you're going through your playing, you have a great career at Ole Miss. I mean, you really had a remarkable season. (laughs) Yeah, you had a remarkable season in the time that you were there. Was there ever a part of you that thought, maybe I'll do this again? I kind of, when I went down there, I had the idea that it would be a one-season deal. That was kind of like my 
my hope, but kind of like I said earlier, I tried not to put the cart before the horse. I was just like, focusing on what I was doing one day at a time, and that was like, I had a ton of fun, so it was like pretty easy to do because it was a it was a really good time being down there. Um, now at the end of that, it was like a little bit of a another one of those decisions. You had to lean on family and that whole deal. Um, but I was kind of hoping it was going to be a one-year situation. <laughs> so he goes down there, 109 tackles, 12 and a half for loss, six sacks, three forced fumbles. It's a it's big year season. in the SEC <laughs> yeah. for a backer. And then you go to the combine, run 465, 39 and a half inch vertical jump, a 10 7 broad jump. I, I mean, the, you aced the combine too. Appreciate yeah. that. So you end up going in the sixth round to the Titans. Did, two part question Did you think you would go earlier than that? And were the Titans the team you thought that would pick you? I had a, I had a good meeting with them. So I like had hope that that would be a would be a team I thought that that was like would be a good fit so I was excited about that but it was like one of those situations where so much of it is out of your control so I try not to put too many expectations on it from from position to like, position in the draft to where you go so I tried it's a lot easier said than done but whenever I had those thoughts pop up I try to kind of bury them <laughs> so then you come out to the Tennessee Titans and that's where things get really interesting Mike do you have the, the rundown here I've got the rundown Mike's got the rundown okay so <laughs> your rookie year you go on IR two days before the season opener with a knee injury. When did that actually happen? Four days before the first game. <laughs> happened in practice? Happened in practice, yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I'd never been, uh, never had surgery before, never been hurt. Like, you know, you get bumps and bruises and broken bones, like some small stuff, but never had that, so. And you've made the team. Yeah. <laughs> so you've made the team out of camp as a sixth round pick, and now you're starting to practice for the first game of the year, and boom. Yeah, it was a tough break. Yeah, was, yeah an, yes. <laughs> an exceedingly tough break. How hard was the year basically being away from the football team when the previous two years had been so strange in so many ways? It was different. I definitely um, took me a minute to, to frame it in the right way so that it was positive, which was like, it took me some time to get to that, to that mind frame. But, you know, I've said it a couple of times, I was, I'm really lucky to have the family that I do. So they leaned on them a lot because I kind of needed it that, at that time. So you come back. You're not 100% though, right? No, nah, I mean, anytime you're on the field, you try to tell yourself you're 100%. Could have been a bit better. So you got waived at the end of camp 2023, signed to the practice squad. You're promoted within three weeks. You play um, against Cleveland, Cincinnati, Indianapolis, and against Baltimore. And then the Titans need a roster spot. And so you're waived again right after London, signed back to the practice squad, and finally you come back. It's like, okay, here we go. Going to Tampa, you're activated, and then what happens in warm-ups? Go through warm-ups, feeling, feeling good, excited to get back, um, get dinged up and down for the game, and then end up being down for the year. Wow. Ugh. Yeah. How are you mentally through all of this? It was tough, you know, but I think I um, had a brother, I had one of my brothers say something to me one time. It's like the, you know, the hardest thing that ever happened to you is the hardest thing that ever happened to you. And you know, that was tough, but it wasn't the hardest thing that ever happened to me. So just like kind of step back and, you know, people have a lot bigger problems than that. And it's all fixable, you know what I mean? So it's like kind of it happened. It's like, what do you do now? So, you know, you sit on it, you kind of feel bad for yourself for, couple days and then you're like, all right, well, what, what do I do now? So coming into this training camp, have you had to maintain that same level of kind of perspective, I guess, on everything that's happening throughout the whole kind of off season, preseason training camp process? Yeah, I think um, probably the biggest perspective shift and it might be a tough word saying shift, but is I, I love football, like love football since I can remember. And I, I never felt like I took the game for granted. Um, but one thing that I didn't realize is that, like, at some point you, you won't play. And I never thought, you know, I was really lucky that I was pretty healthy through most of my career. Um, so I, you get to a point where you think you're a guy who just, like, you know, I, I don't get injured. Impervious. You know? Yeah, and it's just, like, it's silly. But, you know, you get to a certain point and you're fortunate enough for so long that you kind of start to believe it. Um, so you kind of realize every time you get to go to practice, every time you get to go to walkthrough, every time you get to go lift and not have anything be – you know, altered, like it's a, it's really a blessing. So just kind of trying to enjoy that, you know, and I thought that I enjoyed it before and I did, but just like, just being a little bit more grateful for it. When did you know you were all the way back? Kind of like I said earlier, I think whenever you decide 
you know, when the medical staff comes together and they're like, all right, you can go out on the field. If you're on the field, you're hundred percent. So like, I think that one of the tough parts is telling yourself, oh, I'm 90 or oh, I'm 85, 95. So I, I think any time that I go on the field, like, you know, I think it's the one time it's all right to maybe lie to yourself. But early on in that process, like you don't want to fall victim to being unsure of where you are physically. So if you step on the field, just, you know, you're hundred percent. One thing that this has given you is a lot of experience in staying mentally engaged, even when you can't physically participate. Do you think that's giving you a leg up now? I, th I think it's helpful. I think you kind of, if you want to find the good in something, you will. If you want to find the bad in something, you will. So I think when you're in those situations, if you, there's still a lot that you can do. I think that's like tough to tell yourself at times, but you know, when you sit down, it's not like, it's not like I can't look at film. It's not like I can't watch practice. It's not like I can't do other stuff with other parts of my body. So I think it's, you know, giving you some perspective on what else that you can do. Um, I think that's helpful. Why have you clicked so well with linebacker coach Frank Bush? Uh, he's a great guy. He's, he's awesome. Um, he's real. He tells you what it is. There's not a whole lot of sugarcoating. He's huge on technique and fundamentals, which is cool because it, you know, he drives the, drives the point home of like, you know, progress, not being perfect, but just getting better. And I think that's like something that's fun to latch on to. In this defense, one of the things that everybody talks about is that everybody gets the opportunity to make plays. Is that something that you have discovered and that maybe you really enjoy about this defense? Yeah, I think it's fun. I think um, making plays is, is fun and it's cool because it's one of those deals where, you know, you, you know, the way that it's drawn up, it might not feel like it's your time to make a play, but like it can, it can always be. Like you go and do your job and you got 10 other guys doing it, like there's always an opportunity to make a play and that, that's pretty neat. We hate to give the Ravens any credit here, but <laughs> since you grew up there, I know you've probably watched a little Ravens football as a young man. A few games. <laughs> um, getting to play this style of defense as a linebacker, it's almost Ravens-like, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty neat. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you guys are going downhill Fast. from the jump. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's fun. There's definitely been a couple times where I've had some flashbacks and been like, oh, this is, this is pretty neat. We know you need to get back to work, but this is our first chance to really get to talk to you because of coming out of COVID, because of injuries, because of different things that have happened. And you've obviously seen a lot of stuff over the last four years. You're just short of 25, but I, I would guess there are two feelings in you. Stay balanced and stay consistent. Realize every day is the job interview because of what you've been through, but also maybe this has all come together for you at the right time. Would both be correct? Yeah, I think um, kind of the, the narrative deal might be a little bit more on like your guys' side. So mine's just kind of like enjoy the day. Or like you get one at a time, the next one's not, not promised. So, you know, if they, they string together, they string together. But, you know, you go have a good day today and then you wake up and do it again tomorrow. It's like that's kind of the goal. Keep tearing it up. Appreciate it. All right, hey, Titans fans, SeatGeek makes it easy to find tickets so you can be part of all the touchdown celebrations. Whether you're buying or selling football tickets, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek is the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. The most disruptive idea in ticketing, a ticket that works. <laughs> Expect the expected SeatGeek. SeatGeek! You did it again. We'll get there. By the way, speaking of advertising... Mm. The Will Levis, Hellman's <laughs> Mayonnaise Cologne spot that came out early, late Monday or early Tuesday morning. Yeah. Broke the internet. Uh, yeah. Do you, do you think that it broke the internet because A, it's a really well-produced spot. And it is. Or B, it's such a disgusting concept that people can't help but talk about it. I mean, when you say disgusting concept, I mean, what it's are you talking about? It's mayonnaise cologne. Think about what mayonnaise smells like. Yeah. It's kind of a, I mean. I wouldn't wear it. It's not a delightful fragrance, generally. Even if you like, like I like a good mayonnaise-based meal or dish. Like, it's delicious. However, I don't think I want to smell like mayonnaise. So putting it in like a spray cologne but there's, form. But there, there are other things. In, I mean, th here's the thing you need to know. This is real. Yep. It's a real thing. This is 100% real. There really is this cologne. Did you like attempt to purchase it? 
No. Mm. No, because at first I didn't believe it was real. And Ashley Farrell, I was driving in and we were talking about it, and she told me it was all real. real. I was stuck in traffic, and by the time that I had made it to the office, it was sold out. Ah, uh, rats. I don't think I would wear mayonnaise cologne. No, I don't. A lot I of mean, people don't wear cologne anymore. Yeah. I mean, back in the day, you know, you get you a little Dracar or Polo or Yeah, cologne brute. is a, I mean, it's, it, it's a delicate dance anyway. Because yes, it, it is. can go real sideways really fast. Yes. But like, oh, de mayonnaise. Whew. Eggy. I will say this, though. Yeah. I love that he leans in this way. I love it yeah. so much. Yep, yep. It is, it, it's like a Saturday Night Live bit, which is just, which I love any of that stuff anyway. Yeah. And I mean, okay, so he's got an endorsement contract with Hellman's. Mm-hmm. Bless his heart that he was able to do that coming out of college. Right. The mayonnaise in the coffee thing was a little... It was weird. I, that was more I, disturbing to me than the cologne. I genuinely believe when he says that he didn't realize people would bump on it as much as they did. Uh, I genuinely believe him. I don't think he thought anybody would care about that. But then it exploded, and now look where we are. Like, look at what he He's caused. He's the spokesperson for yeah, helmets. Because of one day, he just went bloop and put a dollop in his coffee and recorded it. I mean, what a time to be alive. What world are we living in? He has a really good sense of humor. I would watch him on Saturday Night Live. He has a he any day. Well, let's hope he gets there after he wins the Super Bowl. He gets to host Saturday Night Live. Yeah, because I mean that's what started Peyton Manning. Mm -hmm. The Saturday Night Live after he had finally overcome and he'd won the Super Bowl, and he did the bit with with. I guess Jason Sudeikis, who said he pulled a Peyton Manning, oh, and then yeah. he did then he did the locker room thing with the basketball team, and the one with the kids. Well, the kids' story—that's also funny. If you've ever had the pleasure to spend time with him, and hearing the kids' story, that all of the parents of the kid actors wanted Peyton to hit them in the head with the ball. <laughs> And it was, it was not a real football. Well, sure. Well, I mean, you hope. Yeah. <laughs> it looked real. The mm-hmm. whole thing, I mean, it was just. Great. It was awesome. Yes. It's so funny. But I would, I would watch Will Levis on Saturday Night Live. I think it's great. Powers that be at NBC. Lorne Michaels, if you hear us. Well, you got to win a Super Bowl. Do you? I think you do. Correct? I think you do. Most... J.J. Watt did it. Well, yeah. J.J. Watt hasn't won a Super Bowl. No, he didn't win anything. Heck no, nope. he hasn't. Nope. But, and he was rather funny. But he's, you know, but he's J.J. Watt. I mean, I think J.J. Yeah, I mean, but he's Will Levis. He's, well, maybe. He's a quarterback of an NFL team. Right? It's a big deal. It's a big deal. Get him on there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm not waiting. He's too funny. I like it. Too funny right now. I like it. Hmm? All right, well, that's going to do it for this edition of the OTP. (laughs) Love the Chance Campbell thing, by the way. Uh, Mike, all of your rules suddenly make sense. We couldn't talk about him on the OTP four downs because we need him to talk about him. Well, here's the backstory to it as well. I don't think I'd ever met him. I'd never met him. (laughs) And part of the reason that Amy and I had never met him was COVID. COVID really Because we couldn't. We couldn't go downstairs years in the building here where the players are for two years. Yeah. Yep. I mean, that didn't end until training camp 2022. And at that point, he's a rookie and, and, and a rookie sixth round pick. And yeah. he's doing his thing. And then he gets hurt. And then he's gone. Yep. And so then he comes back in 2023 training camp coming off an injury and he gets cut. He doesn't yeah. make the team. So and then he wasn't. Then he got hurt again and wasn't around anymore. We were shipped passing in the night, right? And now, it, now he's got a chance. Yep. <laughs> Maybe I should have said now he has an Ding. opportunity. No. Chance Campbell have. has an opportunity. Well, he played great. Hopefully, he can keep it up, and uh, because boy, he makes this football team better. But when yep. you hear the forty time and the vertical and the things we were talking about that the OT people got to hear, you're like, whoa. And he was a great lacrosse player. Right. You understand, this guy's an athlete. Oh, absolutely. Even seeing him, he was built, at, like, 
He walked in and I went, yep, that's a football player. Yeah. He just looks the part. He does. Mm -hmm. All right, you ready to wrap it up? I'm ready to wrap it up. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us for this edition of the OTP.